Joining us now to talk about Nicola Sturgeon's resignation is Professor Murray Leith from the University of the West of Scotland. Professor, the resignation announcement from Sturgeon came as a shock to many. What do you make of it? Yes, indeed. Um, there had been some talk about her possibly, you know, retiring. I mean, we talk about resigning, but it's a retirement from the position for her, really. And we expected that after the next general election, but this came as a real bull out of the blue today. Well, there's a lot of shock uh, among many people, a lot of surprise. Um, many people are, who are supporters of Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP are a little bit upset in some regards. So she's very popular. She's extremely popular within the party, although her, her popularity has been declining amongst the wider public in, in recent weeks, which might be one of the reasons behind why she's decided to move now. But I think she's caught everybody on the back foot, so to speak, including the other political parties. So nobody's quite sure how to respond just yet. Sturgeon has been a massive political force for Scotland as First Minister these past eight years. With no clear successor, what will this mean for the country and the desire for Scottish independence? That's a very big question. Um, unlike when she became First Minister, she'd been the Deputy First Minister for almost as long, actually, as she's been in the, in the top job. So, as you say, there is no clear successor to her, and independence has stuttered of late. You know, her idea um, of holding the next general election as a de facto referendum on independence was not popular, and that has caused some backlash amongst the party and amongst supporters. And that's what people are divided on. They're not divided on the question of independence of Scotland. Of course, that's why they're members of the SNP. The whole reason for the party is to seek independence in Scotland as a distinct entity in its own national right. However, you know, I could name you half a dozen individuals who could be the next leader, but I can't tell you one who has a really good chance. There, nobody really knows at this moment in time. In her resignation, Sturgeon said she no longer had the stamina to continue as First Minister, echoing a recent statement made by Jacinda Ardern when she resigned as New Zealand's PM. Do you think the demands of the job really got to her, or does it have anything to do with the recent series of political setbacks? I think it's probably a combination of factors. Uh, as she indicated today, when she took the job, you know, it was, I mean, she's been in the front line of politics, as we just said, for 15 years. And it's a tough job. And remember what's happened in those last 15 years. She took over, of course, she took government the first time the SNP had ever been in any, you know, political form. The Scottish Parliament was still quite young. Well, as it's matured, the job has matured as well. And after she took over after the 2014 um, uh, referendum on independence, she's been seen to lead very strongly. She comes across as is very human. She's a very popular face for Scotland. But at the same time, we've had a pandemic, we've had Brexit. We don't even know where half the situation is going. The Scottish government and the UK government are not really talking to one another in a very positive fashion right now. And she may just be really, really tired. At the same time, there have been some significant political setbacks in the last few months, in the last year, that have found her position probably really very challenging, and maybe she just added it all up and decided it was time to go. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. My pleasure. Thank you.